headed by our own Sheriff Eddie Cathy. He and his deputies, especially those in the Indian Trail Division office, do a great job for our town while saving our citizens millions of dollars a year. The only thing the program lacks is more of a commitment from the town to add officers to the force and work with UCSO to develop town-specific programs. We have to be willing to think outside the box. Leadership is not defined as being like everybody else. Leadership is having the courage to find what works, setting a precedent, and being an example for others to follow. That is what leadership is, and I'm proud that our town stands out as an example in this area. I'd like to conclude my comments by referencing what may be the greatest speech ever made by a president. In the Gettysburg Address, Abraham Lincoln said, we're a nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. About the ceremony that day in Gettysburg, he said, we've come to not a dedicated portion of the field as a final resting place for those who, here who gave their lives that a nation might live. But he said, in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate it is for us the living rather to be dedicated to the unfinished work that they who fought here have thus so far nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not die in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that a government of the people, by the people, for the people shall never perish from this earth. But we have a different... Abraham Lincoln was honoring those who died at the Battle of Gettysburg, but today we have men and women in our military services around the world fighting a war on terror, terror as well as public service agencies at home, law enforcement, fire, medic, who are first responders. When you see them, thank them, shake their hand, tell them they're doing a good job. But we also have a different war going on, folks, and that is the battle for the soul of America. It is the battle of values. It's a battle of values and ideas and what it means to live as free Americans. The battle, the people who are here on the front lines in this battle are the elected officials. We must of necessity struggle to understand the will of the people, but we also must lead and lead and defend the values and principles that have made our country great. We need brave people like you, people of honor, to stand with us so we might work side by side together to realize true liberty and justice for all and to preserve our American way of life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Last year, you became acquainted with a special person named Joe the Plumber. Funny thing, he's now known as Joe the Prophet. Well, today, we have Dave the Plumber that's going to be here to talk with you. Dave Waddell is the owner of Waddell Plumbing and he has a degree in business administration and he understands economics from a small business perspective. Dave, come to the line. Y'all have to excuse me, I left my teleprompter at home. No, no! I'll do the best I can. I am David Waddell. My dad, my grandfather, both master plumbers and business owners. I am third generation on both accounts. Graduated from Parkwood High School, went to Anson Community College. Been in business for myself for almost 10 years now, and I've learned a lot along the way. On the job training, we have problems in this in this country. You know them all. I'm going to run through them real quick. The biggest threat to my business right now is freedom of enterprise. If my business is not free to operate and choose its own destiny, then it is hindered from prosperity. The value of the dollar is a threat to my business. Right now our dollar is based on promises. It's a promissory note. It's backed by debt. It's backed by paper. Not silver and gold anymore. Sweat covers the value of the dollar more than silver and gold these days. And when I don't sweat, the value of the dollar goes down. 
people are afraid. My customer base is a diverse group, but one thing they all have in common is they're worried to death. They're worried because they don't know what direction this country is going. Some of them do know, and they worry even more. But I want to share something with our leaders from Monroe to Raleigh to Washington. There is something you can do to stimulate job growth. There is something you can do to stimulate the economy and just simply get out of the way. government. When you take money out of the private sector and you put it into the government sector, it becomes non-productive. Yeah. Our, government, our government needs to create jobs. We need these fine individuals that are protecting our security right now. We appreciate you very much. But the government the government is entitled to create the jobs within the scope of its power. And that power is spelled out in Christmas in our United States Constitution. Thank you. Yeah. I want to put to rest this myth that this is a Republican operation. I am not a Republican. I'm a member of the Constitution Party in North Carolina. We have a crisis on every front. We have a housing crisis. We have a mortgage crisis. We have an economy crisis. We have a health crisis. We have a crisis crisis. <laughs> Why? These crises are not, they're not a problem. These crises are a symptom of the problem. I'm going to tell you what the problem is. The problem is we have turned from what this country was founded upon. Yes. Yes. The very foundations of this country have been turned. This country was founded on principles found in the Word of God. Our society was built on. The only thing standing between your liberty and tyranny is this blessed Constitution. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you how we got to where we got to today. Where we are today, we have sacrificed, but we have also compromised. And we have compromised the very fabric of this nation. We compromise the Constitution. When we compromise the Constitution, we weaken it. It is a chain on tyranny, and we must not weaken that chain. Now, our moral foundations were based on the Word of God, but they were not done so to impose worship. They are a point of reference. When there's a question as to what is right and what is wrong, we can always go back, and we can zero in on it, and we can make our decisions based upon that. But I didn't come here to complain here to offer solutions. And I, I just want to give you some ideas to take home with you. Things that you can do. I don't care if you're a plumber or a cashier or unemployed or if you're a retiree. God bless y'all that are retired. I love y'all. I'm going to give you 11 things. First thing I want you to consider doing is to read and study the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of North Carolina, Declaration of Independence and the Federal Papers. There's a lot of good information to be found in there, but don't just read it, study it, know it. Because if you don't know what you stand for, you don't know what to vote for. Number two, demand that our leaders return to the foundational principles this country was built on. Some of these include restoring state sovereignty. Vested the powers not given to the federal government because they can handle it. 